Hey guys, welcome back to Ravenclaw Reads. I'm Courtney and today you're joining me for my Middle Grade May TBR. I am so excited about Middle Grade May. If you didn't check out my video last week Wednesday, make sure you go check that out, which kind of talks about Middle Grade May and talks about where I got the idea. It's not my idea. It's just something that I did last year um, and really enjoyed it. And so I am continuing it. I love middle grade books. I think middle grade books in general have really great plot lines um, and they don't get enough credit. So I'm so excited to be reading more middle grade books. Um, and I've definitely read more throughout the year, but this is the month that I really, really, really dig in. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine middle grade books on my list this month. Of course, I'll be reading these in between the other books that I'm reading, um, but I definitely wanted to share what I'm reading. So I'm going to start with my digital books. Um, so the first book that I have on my list, I'm coming back to some authors that I discovered last year during middle grade May because it was a great time. Um, so the first book I'm picking is The Girl in White by Lindsay Curry. I'll show you that. I'm borrowing this from the library. Um, and if you know Lindsay Curry, she writes kind of spooky, scary books. They always, well, not always, sometimes they involve a, a true life historical event and the story is set around that. Um, and so that's kind of what her whole deal is. Sorry, I just wanted to move that angle out the way. Okay, so this one says, Mallory hasn't quite adapted to her life in her town, her new town of Eastport yet. Maybe it's because everyone is obsessed with keeping the town's reputation as the most cursed town in the US. And thanks to the nightmares she's had since arriving, Mallory hardly sleeps. Combined with the unsettling sensation of being watched, she's quickly becoming convinced there's more to her town, something darker. When Mallory has a terrifying encounter with the same old woman from her dreams, she knows she has to do something. But what? With Eastport gearing up to celebrate the anniversary of their first recorded legend, Mallory is forced to investigate the one legend she's always secretly been afraid of, Sweet Molly. So, I love that. It says, pick up this book if you um, are in 5th to ninth grade, or an adult. A story with a strong female protagonist that explores bravery, chilling ghost stories, historical mysteries for kids. I like that. Um, so really excited to get into that. I've started that a little bit. I'm only like 3% in. Um, and so that sounds really good to me. Next, I picked up The School for Whatnots. Oh, I didn't know it was on Kindle. Oh, my goodness, I just borrowed this from the library. This is by Margaret Peterson Haddix. She also wrote um, the book series that I started last year, which was like The Strangers, The Deceivers, The Messengers. Um, and she kind of plays with dual timelines and um, different realms and places. So this one says, "That's uh, no matter what anyone tells you, I'm real. That's what the note says that Max finds under his keyboard. He knows that his best friend Josie wrote it. He'd know her handwriting anywhere. But why she wrote it and what it means remains a mystery. Ever since they met in kindergarten, Max and Josie have been inseparable. Until the summer after fifth grade when Josie disappears, leaving only a note and whispering something about what not rules. But why would Max ever think that Josie wasn't real? And what are what nots? As Max sets to uncover what happened to Josie and what she is or isn't, little does he know that she's fighting to find him again too. But there are forces trying to keep Max and Josie from ever seeing each other again. Because Josie wasn't supposed to be real. This middle grade thriller from Margaret Peterson Haddix delves into the power of privilege, the importance of true friendship, and the question of humanity and identity. Because when anyone could be a whatnot, what makes a person a real friend or real at all? Um, so that sounds really good to me. I did see it at Barnes yesterday, but I was like, let me just get it from Libby. I didn't know it was on Kindle Unlimited, but that one sounds really good. I kind of had my eye on it. Okay, now I have my stack of physical books that I would like to read this month. This is my wish list. I don't know if I'll get through all of these. This is my wish list. So let's start with what I'm reading right now, um, which is a new purchase as well. This is Finally Seen by Kelly Yang. I read um, Kelly Yang's book last year. I don't remember which one it was. I will put it down below when I look at my good. Actually, I just look at my Goodreads right now. I can find that out for you. Kelly Yang writes um, really great books about the Asian American experience and especially the Asian American experience um, of people coming over to the United States. Um, and 
so I, oh, I read new from here that's what it was um, and that was again written um, with a family coming from um, an, what part of Asia were they in but they came over during the pandemic and were trying to start a new life but then the pandemic kind of kicked off and so that was really really interesting I gave that 4.5 stars uh, and this one we're just kind of post pandemic but we're in the middle of having the effects so it says when 10 year old Lena Gao steps off the plane in Los Angeles it's her first time Amer in America and her first time seeing her parents and her little sister in five years finally her parents are ready for her to join their fabulous life in California except it's not exactly exactly like in the postcards Number one, school's a lot harder than she thought. When she mispronounces some words in English on the first day, she decides she simply won't talk ever again. Number two, her chatty little sister has no problem with English and seems to do everything better than Lena, including knowing exactly the way to her parents' heart. And three, they live in an apartment, not a house like in mom's letters, and they owe a lot of back rent from the pandemic. And mom's plan to pay it back sounds a little frothy. As she reckons with her hurt, Lena tries to keep a lid on her feelings both at home and at school. When her teacher starts facing challenges for her latest book selection, it will take all of Lena's courage and resilience to get over her fear in order to choose a future where she'll, where she'll finally be seen. So I really like the premise of this book. I am on chapter 8, um, just page 31. The chapters are really short. She always writes short chapters. Um, but so far, Lena has gotten to Los Angeles and she's just found that all of the letters that her mom wrote are not true. And yes, um, they live in an apartment and the moratorium on rent is just ending and they have a whole bunch of back rent to pay six months worth. And I just feel like this is so real. Um, I live in Minnesota near the Twin Cities and when the moratorium was over, it was going to be really hard for people. And I don't think... Um, that story has been talked about enough or explored. Also, the immigrant experience um, that is discussed in this book, especially with her trying to say things in class and feeling embarrassed or shut down and not encouraged. Um, so I love Kelly Yang's books. They always have a very great comment, um, social commentary. Um, and so love it. Anyway, it's kind of, is it chunky? It's like 300 and something. Oh, sorry, 292 pages, but there's also author's note, and the author, um, Kelly Yang, always adds pieces of her own um, life from the stories, because um, her stories kind of uh, are parallel to her life, but aren't like a direct thing, and then if you are an educator, they have a reading group guide in the back. Um, so I'm excited to read that one, like I said, I already got started on that, hoping to finish that this weekend. Okay, next up, I have the book, a book that I got last year um, after reading the first book in Keeper of the Lost Cities um, story. I read the first one and it caught my eye because first it was a special edition. It had author's notes in it, so it was a little bit bigger and it had all of these great notes from the author about why she put what she put in the book. But I actually did like the story. Um, I just put it down. I haven't been back to it. So this is book two. I would like to read it. It says, Sophie Foster thought she was safe, settled into her home at Havenfield, surrounded by friends and using her unique telepathic abilities to train Sylvani, the first female alicorn ever seen in the Lost Cities. Her life finally seems to be coming together. But Sophie's kidnappers are still out there. And when Sophie discovers new messages and clues from the serious Black Swan group, she's forced to take a terrifying risk. One that puts everyone in incredible danger. In the second book in the Keep of the Lost City series, Sophie must uncover hidden memories as long buried secrets rise to the surface before someone close to her is lost forever. So I'm looking forward to reading this one. Like I said, I read the first one, I really enjoyed it. This one's a big one, like over 500 pages. So again, this is my wish list. Okay, next up I have the book Witchlings. This book is by Clary Bell A. Ortega. I have been trying to read this book since October. It was one of the books I was going to read for my witchy October, but never got to it. I think I've gotten, because I had a bookmark in it, it's almost like stuck to that page. Oh, I think I only got to like chapter two of this book, of just starting it. Um, but I do want to read it. And I am trying to be conscientious about the books that I'm picking up in middle grade to have series, because then they I can keep going back to them, um, even when it's not middle grade May. 
So this one says, every year in the magical town of Ravenskill, young witchlings participate in the Black Moon ceremony, are placed into covens, and come into their powers as full-fledged witches. Seven Salazar can't wait to be placed in House Hyacinth. She's worked so hard to get the best possible placement and to avoid being a spare, a leftover with the lesser powers looked down on by everyone. But on the night of the ceremony, Seven isn't placed into House Hyacinth or in one of the five covens at all. She's a spare. Even worse, when Seven and the other two spares perform the magic circle to seal their coven, it doesn't work. They're stuck as witchlings and will lose their magical abilities for good. Seven invokes her only option, the impossible task. The three spares must defeat the dreaded night beast. If they work together and succeed, they'll gain their full powers. If they fail, well, the last coven to make the attempt ended up being turned into toads forever. So I've read this back cover a few times to you guys on my channel. I really want to get to this. Next up, now I'm like, I can feel myself reaching in these three book selections because they are uh, chunky and they're all sort of like in the magical realm. But I also picked up last year, Nevermore, The Trials of Morgan Crow. This is book one in the Nevermore series and I've heard great things about this series and so I really wanted to like get into it and read it. So this one says, Morgan Crow is cursed. Born on Eventide, Eventide? The unluckiest day for any child to be born, Morgan is blamed for all local misfortunes. And worst of all, the, the curse dooms her to die at midnight on her 11th birthday. Okay, not scary at all. But as Morgan awaits her fate, a remarkable man named Jupiter North appears, whisking her away into the safety of a secret magical city called Nevermore. It's in Nevermore that Morgan discovers she must contend for a place in the city's most prestigious organization, the Wondrous Society. Morgan must compete in four dangerous trials against hundreds of other children, or she'll have to confront her deadly fate. Um, so I am excited about that. Oh no, I was trying to look at the pages and I just saw a spoiler. <laughs> that's the worst. Okay, that's fine because I won't remember it. Um, this book has 461 pages in it. Um, but I am excited to read it. It's been on my shelf for a little bit over a year, so I would like to do that. Okay, next, I am rereading the Babysitter's Club books in order. If you've been a fan of my channel or been watching, you know. Huge fan as a kid. Love their books. Um, I love the podcast Stuck in Sunnybrook. I'm always going to like send you that way if you want to listen to debriefs of real fans of the book. Um, but I read book 36, um, which was out of order because I needed to read the super special first, super special number four. And so I'm going to do that this month. Um, but super special number four is Babysitter's Island Adventure. It says Don and Claudia have a perfect day plan. They've invited Don's brother and three other kids to join them on a sailing race out to Greenpoint Island. The girls have even packed a picnic lunch for the adventure. But then a big storm blows up in the middle of the race and Claudia and Don and the kids never return from the island. The babysitters can't believe it's true. Two of their members are missing. Okay, so this feels like half mystery, half chaos. Um, as we know, um, when we have the super specials, we get everybody's perspective throughout the book, but also like there's some crazy feat that's gonna happen um, and they're gonna be shipwrecked and somebody's gonna find them in the most impossible way, but I'm still here for it. I also just opened up to the middle. These classic books are amazing has this little bookmark page in here where you could split the bookmark into two. So it says your vacation checklist and this the books by Ann and Martin and we're only up to 35 that you could order plus the four super specials. Um, so that is so cool. And then on the back, which is a little decoration. Um, so yeah, anyway, so I'm definitely gonna read this one. Then I picked up another Goosebumps book. So last year I did read a Goosebumps, Goosebumps book. I think I read Ghost Beach and loved that for middle grade May. I devoured Goosebumps books as a kid um, and really, really still enjoy them. They're quick reads, they're kind of spooky. They, they're spookier than they need to be for a kid's book. This one is Say Cheese and Die. It says there's something wrong with Greg's camera. The people and things in his photos turn out wrecked and worse. Go eye to eye with this special collector's edition of the Eerie Classic that has sold nearly two million copies worldwide. See, this is how it used to be back in the day where like the back cover told you nothing. You were just like, all right, I'm going to get it. So excited to read that. And then the last book on my wish list for middle grade May would be 
Pizza My Heart by Rhiannon Richardson. Um, this was a book that I picked up. <laughs> I actually picked it up for myself. I picked it up for myself at one of Reagan's Scholastic Book Fairs. I can admit that and be fine. Um, so this book says, Maya Reynolds has practically grown up in her family's Brooklyn pizza shop, Soul Slice, and is a true city girl. When her family moves to a small town in Pennsylvania to open another pizza place, everything changes. Being the new girl is hard enough. As Soul Slice 2.0, Maya is assigned delivery duty, and her first delivery is a disaster. She trips and falls face first into a rude boy's pizza order. Worse, that same rude and, okay, cute boy shows up at her school. But could good friends, secret crushes, and creative pizza toppings turn Maya's new home into her own slice of heaven? Da, da, da. So, I'm excited about that one. And, yeah, oh my gosh, look at the font on this one. This one's going to be great. Nice little light read. So, those are the books that I would like to read for Middle Grade May. I think I will have to probably double up, especially with my digital books and while I'm reading a physical book. But each of these books excite me so much. And I hope that you participate in Middle Grade May in any way that you want to enter um, because it is just a really great time to uh, dig back into some fun, sweet, wholesome books. Um, and yeah, I look forward to it. So comment down below if you plan to read any of these books, if you read any of them or what do you think. We'd love to hear from you. Love to respond to your comments. As always, thanks so much for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you next time.